If you've at least started researching Milky Way photography, you most likely have come across the term Milky Way season. Most outlets agree that it spans from roughly March to September, but if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can extend that window by a month either side, so February to October. Now, personally, I don't like the term Milky Way season as it only refers to the core of the Milky Way, which is only visible for part of the year. There are other regions of the Milky Way that are visible in the night sky all year round and they're not getting the attention they deserve from photographers. So in this video, we're going to look at the other regions of the Milky Way and where to find them at what time of year. But before we do that, it's useful to know exactly what the Milky Way is and why there's even a Milky Way season at all. So the Milky Way is one of an estimated 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Galaxies are enormous collections of gas, dust, rock and billions of stars and planets all bound together by gravity. They come in all shapes and sizes as you can see in this image taken by the Hubble telescope known as the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Image. Despite capturing only a tiny fraction of the night sky it contains as many as 10,000 galaxies and if you've never seen this photograph before I implore you to read more about it because it's one of the greatest photographs ever captured by humankind. The Milky Way is the galaxy in which our solar system is found. It's the galaxy that we call home. Its shape is defined as a barred spiral galaxy. So at the galactic center lies a supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star. That's surrounded by a hot, dense core or central bulge which is shaped as a bar. And it's very bright. It's the core of the oven. From there, Four main arms spiral away from the core, which also split into smaller arms and spurs. Our solar system, the Sun, the Earth and the rest of the planets are found at a radius of about 27,000 light years from the galactic center on the inner edge of the Orion arm. So as we are inside the galaxy, we cannot see its spiral shape. We're viewing the Milky Way from the inside and viewing it from edge on, which is why the Milky Way always appears as a singular band in the night sky. So what about Milky Way season, or as I prefer to call it, Milky Way core season? The reason we can't see the Milky Way core for part of the year is due to the position of the sun. So during December, the sun is between Earth and the galactic core. So we cannot see the galactic core because it's behind the sun. But three months later, when Earth has orbited around the sun, we begin to see the Milky Way core rising in the southeast before sunrise. Another three months later, an Earth is in between the Sun and the core. So the core is now visible all night long. Another three months later, and the core is briefly visible after sunset before Earth's rotation hides it from view and the core sets below the horizon. Hopefully this also helps to explain why Milky Way core season occurs at the same time of year in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. The part of the night sky we see depends on the position of the Sun and whilst there are certain parts of the night sky you can only see in the northern hemisphere and certain parts of the night sky you can only see in the southern hemisphere, the galactic core lies close to the celestial equator, so it's visible from most of Earth. But what about other regions of the Milky Way, such as the dark dust lane known as the Great Rift, or the bright fuzzy Cygnus region full of hydrogen alpha emissions? And what about the sections that are exclusive to the southern hemisphere, such as the region surrounding the Crux constellation, which is laced with gems like the Carina Nebula and the Dark Coalsack Nebula. First, let's start with the northern hemisphere. Okay, so starting in the northern hemisphere, and let's go over Milky Way core season. So it starts around March. So in March, April, and May, you can expect the Milky Way core to rise in the southeast in the pre-dawn hours so it rises in the southeast and then it's shortly followed by the sun and the Milky Way disappears. So as you can see in this time lapse, the Milky Way core rising in the southeast and then eventually the sun starts to rise and the Milky Way disappears. So in your images, the Milky Way core will be at an angle to the horizon and in the southeast. But if you're at lower latitudes, closer to the equator, still in the Northern Hemisphere, you can catch the Milky Way core a bit more parallel to the horizon before it rises and forms an angle with the horizon. It's also a really good time for Milky Way panoramas. So during March, April and May, facing east, 
you could take a big panorama of the Milky Way arching. So you have the core in the southeast, the Great Rift, the Cygnus region, and down towards Cassiopeia. And then in June and July, the Milky Way core is out pretty much all night. So it starts in the southeast and spends the night crossing the southern sky and makes its way down to the southwest before the sun comes up. Now the height of the core above the horizon depends on your latitude. So if I bring up the location window, so this is for the UK, but as you head further south, so let's go to the south of Spain, Portugal, you see the Milky Way core reaches higher in the sky. The motion is still the same, but the Milky Way core reaches higher in the sky. And if we come down to the Canary Islands, for example, you see how the Milky Way core gets higher in the sky. So your latitude will define how high the Milky Way core is as it crosses the southern meridian. But in June and July, it's out pretty much all night. As you can see in this time lapse, as the sun sets, the Milky Way is already in the sky, starting in the southeast, and then it crosses the southern skies, and it's out pretty much all night. So in your images, the Milky Way can be in more of a vertical position, perpendicular to the horizon. But the one bad thing is that in the northern hemisphere, in sort of mid to high latitudes, there's a perpetual twilight. So the skies don't get completely dark. So for me in the UK, it only gets as dark as astronomical twilight, but that's still good enough to get some nice detail out of the Milky Way, as you can see in this image here, taken in Snowdonia in Wales. Then at the end of Milky Way core season, so around August, September, maybe October, as it gets dark, the Milky Way is found in the south and then makes its way down to the southwest and sets below the horizon. And that marks the end of Milky Way core season. As you can see in this time lapse, the Milky Way core making its way down to the southwestern horizon and sets below the horizon. And another example from October, so as soon as it gets dark, Milky Way core in the southwest and then sets below the horizon. But then there's still plenty of Milky Way to be had, so as the core sets below the horizon, we're left with what's known as the Great Rift, a dark dust lane blocking the view of the Milky Way, standing almost vertical in the western horizon. And these areas of the Milky Way are still quite bright. So as you can see in this image, for example, you have the Great Rift on the western horizon. So it's nice now to be able to take west-facing compositions and have some part of the Milky Way in the sky as well. And just a couple more examples of so this one here from the Yalan Valley in Wales. You've got the Great Rift standing vertically against the horizon. And another example from Lago de Braes in the Dolomites. Again, just that vertical Milky Way with the Great Rift, the dark dust lane, sort of blocking the view of the Milky Way behind. So during September, October and November, you have the Great Rift on the western horizon. And later in the night, as the Great Rift sets, you're left with the Cygnus region of the Milky Way in the northwest. Now this is a really bright, fuzzy region of the Milky Way, full of hydrogen alpha emissions and lots of good stuff. And it's called the Cygnus region because it's the part of the Milky Way that runs through the constellation Cygnus, the swan, and it forms the spine of the bird. So the Milky Way follows the spine of the swan. So in this example here from the Brecon Beacons, you can see a little bit of the Great Rift and then the Cygnus region, that bright fuzzy region of the Milky Way. And you'll also notice three bright stars. That's the asterism known as the Summer Triangle. So you have Vega from the constellation Lyra. You have Alte from the constellation Aquila. And then you have Deneb in the constellation Cygnus. And another example that I took in Turkey just last week, again, a little bit of the Great Rift and then the Cygnus region of the Milky Way shining nice and brightly. As we head into December, January and February, you'll find the Cygnus region already on the western northwestern horizon as darkness falls. And then that comes down lower to the northern horizon. And we now have the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy nice and low to the horizon. So you'll see Cassiopeia there the Andromeda galaxy as well. So in this example image from the Alan Valley in Wales, you can see the Cygnus region, and above the Cygnus region, the Cassiopeia region, 
and just to the left you can see the spiral galaxy Andromeda. Another example taken from the Brecon Beacons in Wales, again a little bit of the Cygnus region stretching up to Cassiopeia, the Andromeda galaxy in the upper left corner. If you're at latitudes closer to the equator, the Cassiopeia region will be a lot lower on the horizon. So you can see here Andromeda nice and close to the horizon and the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way to the right. Although as you can see, it's a very faint region of the Milky Way, so it's good to have dark skies and you can use techniques like tracking and stacking to get the best detail out of this region of the Milky Way. As the night goes on, the Milky Way comes almost parallel to the northern horizon. So in this example image here, taken in Anglesey in Wales, you'll see the Milky Way pretty much parallel to the horizon. So now you can have north-facing compositions and still have some part of the Milky Way. And then that brings us to March where the Milky Way parallel to the northern horizon, Cygnus region starts to climb into the northeast. So just a couple of example images here of the Cygnus region rising into the northeast eastern skies. One from the Elan Valley in mid Wales and another one from Tenerife in the Canary Islands. And then the Milky Way core returns to the southeast and we're back to the start of Milky Way core season. But I just want to go back to the end of Milky Way core season in September time. And as the Milky Way core is set in in the southwest, the winter circle asterism is rising in the east. So you have the likes of Orion and Taurus, Gemini, rising in the southeast with a faint section of the Milky Way running right through the winter circle. So here in this image from the Dolomites in Italy, you can see Orion has risen into the southeast. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, really close to the horizon. And then a faint section of the Milky Way running through the middle of the winter circle. It really is a faint section, so dark skies do help a lot. And again, tracking and stacking will help you get the most out of this region of the Milky Way. But what it's lacking in brightness, it's made up for by the, the bright winter stars and the likes of Pleiades, the open star cluster, and Hyades surrounding Aldebaran in Taurus. And it's just a really stunning section of the night sky. So swinging forward to December, you'll see the winter circle region of the Milky Way rising a lot earlier now, makes its way into the south where the Milky Way is almost vertical to the horizon and the winter circle is much higher in the sky. So as you can see in this image, taken from La Palma during the Geminids meteor shower, that faint section of the Milky Way running vertically up almost from the southern meridian, Orion and Sirius now a lot higher in the sky. And then swinging forward to February, March time where as darkness falls, the winter circle region starts in the south, but then begins to set into the southwest. So it follows the same pattern as the Milky Way core. So you can use all of the same compositions from the Milky Way core, but with the winter circle region of the Milky Way instead. And it's also a really good time of year for another Milky Way arch panorama. This time facing west, where you have the winter circle region on the left in the southwest, and then coming over to Cassiopeia in the northwest and the Cygnus region down in the north. And again, an example image from the Elan Valley in mid Wales. See the winter circle region on the left, all the way over to Cassiopeia, down to Cygnus. And you'll also notice the zodiacal light shining from the horizon underneath the arch. So as you can see, there's Milky Way action to be had all year round and in all different directions as well. So it's not just about photographing the core and photographing the core in the south. There are different sections of the Milky Way and you can find them in different directions at different times of year. So in the Southern Hemisphere, Milky Way core season is similar in some ways, but different in many others. So it starts around the same time, although a little bit earlier in the Southern Hemisphere, you can catch the Milky Way core in February. But in February, March, April and May, the Milky Way core rises in the Southeast 
in the pre-dawn hours. So similar to the Northern Hemisphere, but the Milky Way at a much different orientation. It's pretty much upside down to what we're used to in the Northern Hemisphere. So as the core rises, it gets higher into the eastern skies and you'll see the Milky Way arching from east to west. And these regions here, so the Norma region, down to the Crux constellation and Carina, this region is exclusive to those in the southern hemisphere, as are the large and small Magellanic clouds. This is an example image of the Milky Way core rising into the southeast in the pre-dawn hours, taken from the Vicuña Desert in Chile. And over to the west, you have the Colsac Nebula, the Carina Nebula, this exclusive region to the southern hemisphere, and of course the large and small Magellanic clouds, pretty low to the horizon at this time of year. And if your camera is astro-modified, you can also capture the Gum Nebula in the constellation Vela. It's believed to be the remnants of a supernova that happened about a million years ago. But if your camera is not astro-modified, you will struggle to pick up this red colour. And it covers a big area of the night sky as well. But it's also a good time of year to capture a Milky Way arch. So facing south, you have the Milky Way core and the Great Rift in the east the Norma region, down to the Crux constellation, and Vela. You could just about see the Gum Nebula there, down in the west, and then the large and small Magellanic clouds really low on the horizon. Then in June and July, the Milky Way core climbs higher into the sky, crossing into the northern skies, and then the Milky Way core can be found almost directly overhead. So in this example here, you can see the arch now a lot higher in the sky, and then the Milky Way core almost directly overhead, crossing into the northern skies. In this image, taken at the Alma Observatory in Chile. And it's a really good time to photograph the core because it's so high in the sky. And it's really nice to get the tracker out and get some amazing detail on the core. And at this time of year, if you face south, you'll have the Colsac Nebula, Crux, Carina, standing vertically against the horizon. The large and small Magellanic Cloud still pretty low on the horizon as well. But just to show you a detailed shot of this region of the Milky Way, with the dark Colsac Nebula right next to the Crux constellation and the Carina Nebula as well. It's really a stunning region of the Milky Way. And as you can see, there's a lot of bright and colourful stars in that region as well. So it's a really nice area of the Milky Way. And one of the reasons I'm so jealous of those who live in the Southern Hemisphere. Then during August, September and October, the Milky Way drops from high in the sky down to the west, providing another good opportunity for a Milky Way arch. As you can see in this panorama, taken in the Atacama Desert in Chile. So the Milky Way core is still pretty high in the sky. Now with the Great Rift, the Cygnus region on the right and the Norma region on the left. To the left of the arch, you can see the large and small Magellanic clouds. And to the right of the arch, you can see Andromeda, the spiral galaxy. And a little further right, you'll also notice the zodiacal light as well. The Milky Way core continues to drop to the southwest and then lies pretty much parallel to the horizon. Again, another example from the salt plains in the Atacama Desert, the Milky Way running almost parallel to the horizon. And then Milky Way core season comes to an end, September, October time, when the core starts to set below the horizon. But as it does so, other regions of the Milky Way start to rise in the east in the southeast, so you'll notice Orion and Sirius, the region that we call the Winter Circle in the Northern Hemisphere, but of course now the Southern Hemisphere at this time is heading into summer. But that region starts rising into the east. You'll see Carina and Crux rising into the southeast just before dawn. 
and what we call the Winter Circle region now rising into the northeast. So this example here, you can see Orion and the Milky Way almost parallel to the horizon, and then Orion and that faint section of the Milky Way climbing higher and higher into the northeast. And as you can see, it's also a good time for another Milky Way arch panorama, this time facing east. As you can see in this example here, Orion rising into the northeast. You can see the Colsac Nebula, Corina Nebula on the right side. And in this image taken with an Astro modified camera, you can see the Gum Nebula and just how big it is there in the Vela constellation. And then to the upper right, you can see the large and small Magellanic clouds. And to the left of the arch, you can see Pleiades and Hyades around Aldebaran in Taurus. In November and December, the winter circle climbs higher, crosses into the north, stands almost vertical to the horizon. So this is an example image here. You see the Milky Way standing almost standing perpendicular to the horizon. But again, this is a faint region of the Milky Way. So dark skies certainly help. And then as we come to January, February time, and then as we come to January, February time, Orion and the Winter Circle region drops down to the northwest. The Milky Way now at a bit more of an angle to the horizon. And that region sinks down into the west. And as you can see again, the Milky Way now arching across the south-southwest with the Orion and the Winter Circle or the Summer Circle in the west. The Crux and the Colsac Nebula and Corina now high in the sky, almost at the apex of the arch, and then coming down to the Norma region of the Milky Way in the southeast. As you can see in this example image here, again, taken with an astro modified camera, so you get all of that red hydrogen alpha emission, and you can see the Milky Way arching over the south southwest. And then that brings us back to the start of the Milky Way core season, where the Milky Way core rises into the southeast and climbs into the eastern sky. Now, hopefully you feel inspired to photograph different regions of the Milky Way and to continue shooting the Milky Way all year round. If you want some apps to help you plan or locate the Milky Way, throughout this video I've been using Stellarium, which is also available as a mobile application as well. But some others I recommend are Starwalk 2 and also Sky Guide for Apple phones. If you really want to get meticulous with your Milky Way planning, you should try the app PhotoPills. And if you want to find out how I use PhotoPills to plan my Milky Way photographs, you can check out my Milky Way Masterclass over on the PhotoPills YouTube channel. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.